how have your interactions with Greg Popovich been? <clears throat> I was just with him last night. He's a chipper, chipper young man. Um, good. Uh, you know, I, I'm sure you're referring to back, I think it was in 2015 or something. Um, you know, what people don't realize about him is, and I'm not letting him off the hook because I think he needs to be held a little bit more, I don't know about accountable, but but people need to call him on the carpet a little bit more. Off, off of live television, he's a sweet man and he's nice. And we get the coolest thing that we get as a national partner with the NBA is we get a few minutes off the record required mandated with each coach before each game we do on TNT. So like last night, spent 15 minutes with Mark Dagnall, spent 15 minutes with Greg Popovich. And in in those instances, he is giving us a lot of content, a lot of good information, some of which we can use on the air, a lot of which we can't use on the air. And it's much different than his public persona. I wish at times he wasn't as condescending. I wish at times he, I think he's hypocritical in sometimes he charges the media with taking the game too seriously. And then if you take it too lightly, he wants to know why you're not taking it more seriously. I, I think that he sets you up in whatever corner he wants to be in. I wish he would embrace, I wish the whole San Antonio organization would embrace the media, particularly their broadcast partners who are essentially funding a big part of the league, that we are partners and not enemies, and that working together creates better content for the viewer and the fan. It becomes a better experience. And I also think, too, and I I should ask Pop at some point the next time I, I see him, like those sideline interviews, coaches interviews at the end of quarters that he became so famous for first with Craig Sager and then with David Aldridge and then Doris Burke and and me. And, you know, I'm not throwing myself in that category, obviously, but I've done those and he's sometimes been a jerk and sometimes been nice. But what I, I, I I'm curious to know if he recognized that by him making it such a spectacle made the NBA want to continue to do it. Yeah. Right. It became something that like we never tease any interviews that we're gonna about to go do something, but like ESPN and TNT would would go to break at the end of the third quarter and saying, "Coming up next, what's Greg Popovich going to say to Craig Sager?" You know, stay tuned for that. Or people on Twitter are all like, "Up, oh, Pop's going to do an interview here. Let's sit and watch." And sometimes it was eventful, and sometimes there was nothing there. But by him doing that, it made it it, it made it an event. So I I just wonder like. It was, to me, counterintuitive. If he didn't like doing the interviews, he didn't want to do it, he should have said nothing. He should have just gave a couple word answers and made it boring and vanilla, and there'd be no entertainment value, and maybe we wouldn't still be doing it, you know, 10 years later. Yeah, no, he definitely, he he gave the potential for kind of teasing that there there could be a unique interaction as yes. opposed to just standard traditional coach speak. Yes.